Welcome to the local campaign on Rogers TV. This is the debate for Vaughn Woodbridge. I'm your moderator, Chris Emanuel. Today we're going to hear for, uh, for the next half hour uh, from candidates talking about various issues. They will have uh, an opening statement and then they will get questions from either myself or we have taped questions from a member of the public. My job as moderator is simple, to make sure our candidates don't talk over each other so that you, the viewers, uh, can hear them speak. Uh, we have invited all candidates that were registered. Uh, we only had two candidates uh, uh, show today, and I will introduce them. On the left is Francesco Sorbera, the Liberal Party candidate, and on the right is Julian Fantito, the Conservative Party of Canada candidate. Uh, we did a draw for seating and speaking order before we began, and we'll be alternating uh, uh, for the course of the debate. We'll start right away. Francesco, you have one minute to do your opening statement. Thank you. I'm here today as the candidate for the Liberal Party of Canada and want Vaughan Woodbridge because I believe that better is possible for all of us. The results of the last 10 years under the Harper government, Harper Conservatives motivated me to put my hand up as a Liberal candidate in our fight for real change. What we really need in Vaughan Woodbridge is a Member of Parliament who will bring our issues to Ottawa instead of bringing Ottawa's issues to Vaughan. We need someone who understands what it's like to be raising a family here. As a father of two, I'm more than motivated than ever to make sure we're building a future full of opportunities for my girls and every Canadian. In this time of economic recession, we need leadership that will invest in our future while interest rates are low and put together a team full of people with experience in creating jobs. As a member of Justin Trudeau's economic team, the 25 years I've spent working in finance will help me bring real change to Vaughan Woodbridge and all of Canada. I'm honoured to be representing the Liberal Party of Canada here in Vaughan Woodbridge and look forward to meeting you, making you proud as a Member of Parliament on October 20th. Thank you, Francesco. Julian Fantino, you have one minute. Well, let me begin by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the Neville Lake uh, family, friends, uh, for this very tragic loss that we've just experienced in our community. I'm an immigrant to this country and have been a resident of Vaughan Woodbridge uh, since 1981, raised my family, have volunteered extensively in all kinds of different issues, and still do. Uh, with seniors, with children, uh, with sports programs, and certainly with the community to try and make it a quality place to live, work, raise a family, and of course run a business. I'm very proud of the work that we have done since my election into Parliament uh, back uh, five years ago, and the kinds of things that we've been able to achieve for Vaughan have been indeed very, very impressive. Some one million dollars, billion dollars has come to Vaughan from the federal government over the last numbers of years since we were in office. And I've continued to champion that for Juan Woodbridge all along and, and still will continue doing so. Thank you. Uh, candidates, uh, we're now going to go into the question portion. The first question will be first to you, uh, Julian, and it will come from the tape. Hi, my name is Paul Peary, and I'm a councillor for the town of Aurora and a board representative on the Federation of the Canadian Municipalities. My question to all the candidates is what is the biggest problem in your opinion facing local municipalities and what would your party do to address the issue? Well, sure. thank, thank you for the question. Uh, going door to door and of course being intimately plugged into the community and also at the political level, uh, there are a few issues that are very much prominent in the minds of people, especially seniors. Uh, their, their safety, their increase about uh, taxes, their ability to maintain a quality of life in their homes, and certainly the one issue that uh, resonates over and over again as well is uh, their concern for health issues. Uh, the concerns, of course, that they bring to bear are those that uh, we have been working on and will continue to work on, the kinds of help we've been providing to seniors, the kinds of help we're providing to municipalities, with the economic action plan and as a for instance in Vaughan alone uh, we've been able to bring back into Vaughan some 73 million dollars in infrastructure funding to help municipalities to help Vaughan deal with roads and and community centers and other public facilities and I'm very very proud of that thank you Francesco you have one minute thank you for your question Paul the number one issue I hear at the doors every time I'm out canvassing Number one issue I face commuting to work is congestion gridlock. We need to deal with that. Justin Trudeau, under our plan that we presented, we are going to invest in infrastructure. 
we've committed to spending $125 billion, investing $125 billion over 10 years. A large portion of that, $20 billion, will go towards public transit. We'll get people to work quicker in the morning. We'll get people home faster in the evening. We'll get them to their school kids. We'll get them to, to ballet, mm -hmm. to ice hockey. We need to do We need to create jobs with that investment, and we will do so. Everyone is calling for it. Interest rates are low. We need to invest in infrastructure. Infrastructure for York Region, for Aurora, for Vaughan Woodbridge, for King Vaughan, for Newmarket. We need it. We need it now. We can no longer wait. We can't wait years. We have an infrastructure deficit. The Harper Conservatives have ignored it for the last 10 years. And now we will take care of it and we will invest. Thank you. Gentlemen, it's the open forum. Well, you know, it's ironic that the um, Liberal platform to date, uh, calculated by experts, uh, seems to come up with about $6.5 billion shortfall. And uh, the way it's projected, of course, governments don't make money, they spend taxpayers' money. Uh, and of course, the only way that that can be uh, paid off or assumed is through increased taxes. And the one thing I hear over and over again is the last thing people want right now, uh, when our economy is starting to come back and to, and to improvements, is an increase in taxes. And all you're, or you're proposing, your party is proposing, is increasing task, taxes, dipping farther into people's pockets. Since we have been elected, we have eliminated 180 separate, reduced 180 separate taxes that people no longer need to pay. A family of four, an average family of four today, pays 6,600 fewer dollars in taxes and benefits than what they were when the Liberal government was in place. So to my estimation, all these promises, all they, all they do is mean more taxes, more taxes that people can't bear, can't suffer, and they, the gap, the gap, how are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you gonna pay off $6.5 billion of a gap? Thank you, Julian, for your comments. Let us all remember that the federal conservatives inherited a $15 surplus and took us into deficit before the Great Recession hit. Let us also remember, in the last consecutive eight consecutive years, the conservative government <clears throat> under Mr. Harper has added over $150 billion of debt onto our, onto our country's debt. Let us also remember that this government in the last 10 years has taken us to, through two economic recessions. Now, the Liberal plan is very simple. We will cut taxes for the middle class. We will cut tax taxes for average working class Canadians. It will be a $3 billion tax cut. <clears throat> and you know what, Julie? You know what we will do? We will rem remove income splitting for families because that only benefits the 15% of families in Canada, the wealthiest 15%. And yes, we will ask those in the top 1% to pay a little extra more. They've done well. We continue to encourage them to do well but we will ask them to give a little bit more. The, the one thing I'll say, candidates, is uh, this, we will have a question later about costing. Uh, before you continue, uh, Councillor Peary's question was specific about support for municipalities. I'll interject and let you continue your open forum. Mr. Fantino? Well, it, 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 getting back to it, I mean, $73 million in the last uh, uh, five plus years coming back to, to Vaughan, in areas of infrastructure and so forth, there's a direct help to the infrastructure requirements that the city would have had to deal with in any event. Uh, seven, almost $700 million uh, for the extension of the Spadina uh, subway up into Vaughan. Uh, all kinds of other infrastructure, bridges, roads, uh, the kinds of things that municipalities have to deal with have all been funded by the federal government through federal uh, infrastructure funding. The, uh, the, uh, the, the kind of help that I believe we brought to Vaughan certainly has been extensive, and I'm very proud of the effort that we have made, be it uh, the refurbishing or retrofitting of, uh, of municipal facilities like uh, a municipal, uh, municipal, municipal run uh, infrastructure, uh, the kinds of, uh, of uh, monies that we've uh, been able to secure to assist uh, rapid transit, uh, to assist transit. Uh, all of those issues are what I believe been very much appreciated I'm gonna uh, interrupt, by the citizens. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm going to give Francesco a chance to respond to that, and then we'll get to another question. Francesco? Thank you. This, this topic deals with infrastructure, and we've committed to invest $125 billion 
over 10 years. We are going to more than double the current commitment. We will partner with the municipalities. We will partner with the regional councillor here from Aurora. We will have funds to flow to municipalities. We will sit down with provinces and municipalities, something that the Harper government does not like to do. Not, does not like to do. We will have funds directed to municipalities because we know they're cash strapped and the, and the federal government has the financial wherewithal to help them. That is our commitment. We will more than quadruple to $20 billion the investment in public transit in Canada. That, those are monies that will flow to Vaughan Woodbridge, flow to York Region. Those are monies that will create jobs. And I sp tell everyone that's watching this this evening or, or this afternoon, we will invest for today and create jobs for the future so our Thank families you. will have a better quality of life. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go to the next set of questions. Uh, this one is from me and uh, uh, Francesco. We'll start with yourself on this one. Obviously, you both have been knocking on doors uh, over the last uh, number of weeks. Uh, you're very engaged in your community. What, are, what is the biggest issue you're hearing uh, that is a local issue? Uh, and how will you use your voice in Ottawa uh, to help resolve that matter? Well, first of all, first, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. First of all, we need a representative who brings Vaughan's issues to Ottawa, not Ottawa's issues to Vaughan. And from what I've been hearing at the door, I've been hearing a lot. And the first priority is the economy. We've got to get this economy working for all Canadians. We've got to get this economy working for all middle class Canadians. And that is what we're going to do. We've gone through two recessions under the Harper government. Um, costs, uh, daycare costs, hospital costs are increasing. Canadians and average Canadians need a break. We're going to provide them with a $3 billion tax cut to middle class families. $700 to each individual filer. We are going to help families out with increased child care benefits. Yes, they will be income tested. Yes, they will receive families making a hundred and lower than $150,000 a year will receive substantially more. Yes, we will ask those in the 1% to pay a little extra, but that is fair. That is right. And we will move this country forward. Thank you. Uh, Julian, you have one minute. Well, you know, one of the things that comes up over and over again is, uh, is the plight of uh, citizens with respect to the health uh, care system. Uh, certainly in Vaughan, we are in very bad need of, of a hospital, something that's been talked about for some 10 years. I realize full well that the delivery of health care is a provincial responsibility, but I'm amazed actually at the amount of uh, of transfer funds that the federal government has, in, in fact, uh, transferred to, to, uh, to the province. 2004, 2005, it was $7.7 .7 billion. And now we see uh, 2015, 2016, $13.1 billion in health transfer costs alone. So my concern is, going back to Ottawa, is where has our health system gone to the extent that it has? And when I go back there, I will be digging deep into this issue so seniors and others who need, who need health care don't have to go through this nonsense as they do today. Thank you. We're going to open the floor to discussion. Francesco. Well, I'm happy to, to report, and I believe everyone in, in Vaughan knows this, New York Region, we're getting a hospital thanks to our provincial partners. <clears throat> Under the current Liberal government, we, the structure will commence building next June. The funds are there. They're going to be committed. It's being done. That's great. That's a win-win situation for Vaughan, for all the residents of York Region, and we're moving forward on that. I'm also happy to announce today, Mr. Trudeau committed to home care, a $3 billion investment in home care, and we're moving forward on that because it's, there's an interesting fact that came out this morning. There are now more individuals in Canada older than 65 than there are younger than 15, and we need to start making these smart investments in home care, and that's what we've committed to. Those are smart investments that will help our seniors because I hear it at the door. They want to stay in their homes and we will help them to do so. We will put more money in home care, as Mr. Trudeau was saying this morning. Those are real investments, but more so, Chris, into our audience, that's leadership. That's a leadership that's been lacking in Ottawa for 10 years and that's why we're going to bring Vaughan's issues to Ottawa, not Ottawa's issues to Vaughan. Well, Vaughan's issues to Vaughan, Vaughan's to, to, to Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa's issues has been $73 million in, in aid and support and infrastructure and programs directly attributed or directly uh, benefiting uh, Vaughan residents and Vaughan businesses. Uh, ironically, we have uh, seniors today that can make up to $20,000 as a single senior 
uh, a couple $40,000 without having to pay one cent of uh, federal taxes. Uh, we have done a lot for seniors. We have done a lot for the community. Uh, we have done a lot for the, the needs of, of, of growth in our community. The majority of businesses in, in, uh, in Vaughan are small businesses. Uh, they hire a, a significant numbers of employees. And uh, recently, uh, Minister Trudeau pointed the finger at them, indicating that small businesses are but a way to evade paying taxes. Uh, very, very, I believe, damaging remark for the major uh, businesses, the major employers in our community that I think is not reflective of a true understanding of how hard these people work, the jobs they provide, and the kind of support that is given to them by the federal government to date, reducing their business taxes over time and planning to reduce it even further. Thank you. Gentlemen, we're going to go to the uh, third question, uh, and it is a taped question, and this uh, will be to yourself first, uh, Julie. Hi, my name is Michael, and I work in the financial industry. My question for the candidates is how does your party plan to fund government initiatives, and what would the impact be at both an individual and a corporate level? Here's that costing question. Julie, well, I, I'm grateful for the question. Again, uh, uh, we don't plan to raise taxes. Uh, in fact, as I indicated earlier, we have uh, uh, taken down some 180 reductions in taxes since we've been in, in office. Uh, our mission is not to raise taxes. It's to facilitate growth, and we're doing that now without uh, uh, an added burden on taxpayers. Uh, we obviously are and very much committed to helping those who are creating an economy, who are creating jobs, who are helping people put food on the table. And we're doing that without increasing taxes. The easy, the, the cop-out always is to make promises and dip further into people's pockets. And uh, people, if, uh, if you listen to me, uh, you better hang on to your wallets with a $6.5 billion gap in the promises made by the Liberal uh, leader uh, from my point of view, Thank we'll you. be Thank dipping you. into pockets. Thank you. Francesco, you have one minute to respond. Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, we have laid out a, a plan and a set of commitments to, the, to, to Canadians. I'm part of Justin's economic team. I've worked 25 years in finance abroad and here in, in Toronto. I know how it drives an economy, and our plan will drive that forward. As many have commented on the Liberal plan, infrastructure investment will create jobs, create good jobs, benefit today, and, and benefit in the future. Cutting taxes for the middle class, it's the right thing to do. It'll put pocket into those that need it the most. Yes, we will ask a little extra from those making above $200,000 a year. And I want, them, I want those risk takers to do well. I want them to, to earn a great living and make a lot of money for them and their families and for the community and reinvest in their businesses. But you know what? Asking them to pay a little bit extra is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. We will invest in our communities, we will invest in people, we will invest in infrastructure, and we will get this economy moving forward. Thank you. Gentlemen, uh, open Well, when, when, when uh, we, uh, in 2008-2009, had to deal with the global recession and the kinds of issues that impacted not only Canada but the global uh, economy, uh, Canada has fared out uh, better than the G7 counterparts. And not only that, uh, we're not in a recession now. Uh, most recent figures today uh, indicate that Canada is moving progressively, uh, inches up the, we're the 13th uh, on the global competitive uh, rating right now. Uh, I, I can understand raising taxes or, or going into, into deficit at a time when there's an emergency, the global recession and all of that, but this is not the time. We're, we're coming out of uh, the recession now. Uh, we're doing uh, fairly well. We're continuing to create jobs. 1.3 million net new jobs have been created since the downturn in the, eco in the economy in this country. This is not the time to go further into debt because, as I said, or as I do say, the only way that governments can assume these kinds of responsibilities, the debt load, will only come from the pockets of taxpayers. And we cannot afford at this time to regress and start raising taxes on the hard-working Canadians that are, in fact, paying the freight. 
First of all, the Conservatives inherited a $15 billion surplus and blew it before the Great Recession hit. And then took us into deficit financing for eight years and added $150 billion to our national debt. Now, this year, the Canadian economy was in a recession. It's second recession under the Conservative watch in the last 10 years. What we are saying, the set of commitments, is to invest in Canadians, invest in Canada, and move this country forward. That is the, that is the plan brought forward by Mr. Trudeau, and we will do that. Income splitting for families. We will get rid of it. Jim Flaherty, your former colleague, God rest his soul, told the Conservative caucus, do not bring in income splitting for families. It only benefits the wealthiest. We're going to get rid of that. And Mr. Fantino, we are going to bring a broad-based tax cut to middle-class families. Those are the ones most deserving. Those are the ones that live in our riding. Yes, the 1%, the 1% of all Canadians will be asked to pay a little bit more. But I think they're okay. And we encourage them to do so. But middle-class Canadians deserve a break. The Conservative Party has not taken care of middle-class Canadians. The Liberal Party of Canada will do so. On October 20th, they will get a break. They will get their taxes cut. Now, in terms of our economy, 1.3 million unemployed, a 7% unemployment rate. We are underperforming the United States of America. Our exports are lagging. Why? Because Mr. Harper focused all his energies on Alberta, I'm gonna, I'm gonna on oil. He neglected Sorry. Ontario. I'm going to give uh, Julian a chance to respond, and then we'll have the final question. Well, you know, we're going around in circles uh, trying to address uh, what we're going to do, the Liberal Party, what the Liberal Party is going to do. But my colleague here has not answered the very relevant question about your platform today comes up $6.5 billion short. And uh, the people who have tried to figure this out uh, are not able to, other than the only way, the only way that that can be dealt with by uh, such a scheme, a plan, is to increase taxes. Governments don't make money. The only way that governments can uh, execute on behalf of citizens and, and, and expense on, on behalf of citizens is through tax dollars. So where are you going to get the, the, the $6.5 billion that you have promised Canadians that uh, they're waiting for? Our plan is a fully costed plan. You can go to liberal.ca to find the details. It's been referenced upon by financial experts as a prudent financial plan, including by Kevin Page, the former uh, PBO officer. Our plan is fully costed, Mr. Fantino. We will not, not raise taxes on Canadians. We will not raise taxes on corporations. We will not raise taxes on small businesses. We will help seniors out. We will help middle class Canadians out. We will help youth and students find jobs, but we will not raise taxes on corporations or middle class Canadians or small businesses. Thank you. Uh, this is a, probably a good segue to our final question, and I'll start with you, Francesco. Uh, there's no doubt about it. We've been in a global uh, economic downturn since uh, 2008, though there are differing views on what the current economic situation is in Canada. How do you and your party view the current economic situation and specifically your plans to stimulate the economy? Francesco, you have one minute. Thank you, Chris. Our plan is one, a plan that I'm excited about, I am passionate about. It is to invest in Canadians, it's to invest in Canada, it's to invest in roads and bridges and subways and get us moving again, it's to get to create jobs again, it's exactly what David Dodge, David Dodge our former Bank of Canada governor, is calling for, it's exactly what the former Vice Chairman of RBC just wrote about, we need to invest in infrastructure. We'll do that, $125 billion over 10 years. We have more than quadruple spending in public transit. We will also bring in broad-based tax cuts for middle-class Canadians, hard-working Canadians that deserve a break, that don't get a break with Mr. Harper's income-splitting policy. We will also increase benefits to families, families that are making less than $150,000 a year that are 90% of Canadian families. We will help them out. We will lift them up. We will help them join the middle class. Thank you. Julian, you have one minute. Well, the, the, again, you know, the, the irony is we will do this, we will do that, we will do all these wonderful things. It's almost like going to a candy store and what do you want? I go back to the principal position that we have taken, and that is that we will continue to improve the economy, we will continue to create jobs, we will continue to create advantage for employers, we will continue to create advantages for families and seniors by our low tax plan, not going into further uh, debt. Uh, we are in fact planning as we speak to continue our low tax plan. 
We continue to, uh, to, to negotiate trade agreements to create a, a worldwide marketplace for exporters from these communities, from Canada. We will continue to fund the, the, the seniors and so forth. But I can tell you again, where are we going to get $6.5 billion to pay for the Liberal plan? Mr. Fantino, again, our plan is fully costed. Please go to the website and check it out. I will say the Conservatives, again, have added $150 billion to our national debt through their eight years of consecutive deficits. I will say again, there are 1.3 million Canadians out of work today looking for work. That does not include underemployed, those working part-time, those working in temporary positions. We need to help them. The Conservatives are ignoring them. Mr. Fantino will not address that. 7% unemployment rate. Two economic recessions in 10 years. That is the Harper record. He doesn't want to talk about it. I will. But more than that, Mr. Trudeau and his economic team, which is broad and a diverse team, we've laid out a set of commitments. We will invest in Canadians in Canada, $125 billion over 10 years. We will introduce broad-based tax cuts. Individuals will receive $700 in lower taxes next year. We will increase benefits to families, not send checks to millionaires and people that are well-to-do, we will send checks to those families that want to join the middle class. And for seniors, for those seniors most in need, we will increase the guaranteed income supplement by 10%. And also, one last thing, Mr. Harper went to Switzerland and raised the eligibility age. Yes, he went to Switzerland and raised the eligibility age for OAS and GIS to 67. We will return it to 65. That is $13,000. Those, those people that will be retiring De need and deserve. Thank you. Well, you know, I appreciate the promises and the fact that go on my website and it's all costed out. People have gone on the website. People have taken very, people, authorities have taken very close, uh, scrupulous notice of what these uh, promises are all about. They're all about increasing taxes. We are on the opposite side of the ledger. We are continuing to help seniors. We're continuing to help families. We're continuing to help small businesses. We're increasing the employment eligibility, eligibility of people with training and so forth. Uh, but we're not saying that we're going to come and, and, and rip your wallet or get into your wallet with a $6.5 billion deficit that is only covered off through taxes. There's no other way, people, that anybody can cover off $6.5 billion in, in any kind of a deficit without taxes being raised and increased. No way. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have a quick response, and I'm going to wrap it up. As we all remember, Prime Minister Harper said that he would never take his government to deficit, and he did it for eight years. We've offered a fully costed plan. It's on our website, and it's been looked at by the experts. We're not increasing taxes on middle class Canadians. We're cutting them. Gentlemen, we've asked the one percent to thank pay you uh, very more. much uh, for your participation today. Uh, best of luck uh, to our viewers. Uh, visit uh, rogerstv.com uh, for more information. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And be sure to tune in on election night and be sure to vote. Thank you.